Yeah, today I'm going to teach you guys how to weight your hobo space um, by a, a new uh, new thing out this year from Spirit River called Soft Tungsten. So first off, start your thread like normal. I got a 25 millimeter Waddington shank, six out uni thread in fire orange, and uh, getting in the winter spirit of things. I think we'll do uh, a bright orange and red combo. So make a make a thread base. I've got some 30 pound fire wire I'm going to use for my loop to put my stinger hook on. When I put this on I'm going to bring it back uh, towards about an inch and a quarter inch and a half behind the, the shank. Lay it on top of the Waddington. Make a bunch of good wraps. Clear back. and back forward and now take this and bring it back over your last or over your thread wrap and tie it back down for a bit and that'll be plenty strong to hold any fish we've, we've caught almost 30 pound chinook without even gluing that or anything this year it's held really well the next thing are these soft tungsten strands. Uh, they come pretty long and what I do is I cut it in half. And so I get two flies per strand. This is this is soft tungsten. It's pliable but it weighs, it weighs pretty good. So I'm going to flip over my shank and I tie it in on the bottom. And that'll achieve a couple of different things. That'll a, weight the fly without having to use heavy barbells or, or anything like that. But it'll also keep this riding hook side down. So it'll be it'll continue to be an up eye hook. Alright. So for the butt I'll just do some UV red ice dub. Dip it up just a little bit to make a nice little kind of a butt color. I'm going to take some guinea. This is Jumbo Guinea. Strip it back. Tie it in tip first. Now for my body, I'm just well, I'm going to use STS Trilobal and Hot Orange. Any dubbing will work, whatever you got lying around and the colors you like. Um, the Trilobal Hot Orange is one of my favorite hot oranges just because it's so bright and vibrant. The Ice Dub Orange isn't really quite as bright as I like it. Uh, for these kinds of things, for fall caddis and stuff, it works pretty good. So I dump that up. Where we left our Tungsten. Okay. And it's important here to give yourself plenty of room. We're going to have two marabou plumes and also some Amherst pheasant. So you want to make sure not to crowd this eye whatsoever because it's going to fill up real fast. And I'm just going to take the top end and take my scissor points and just kind of kink these feathers back so they lay to the rear when I wind them. And wrap it up to where your thread is. I got, I got four wraps out of this. I'm usually I'm pretty happy with three if I can get three wraps. But just space it to where the guinea comes all the way up to where you're tying it off at. Uh, the shorter guinea feathers, obviously, you won't get as many wraps, so you can spread it out a little farther if you need to. Okay, now for my first marabou plume, I'm going to go 
orange and it's important to pick out a really good quality spay plume like this one. You don't want them like a, like a wooly bugger style where everything's up at the head. This is all, this is really nice and separated marabou. And this is a spay marabou from Fish Hunter. I'm just going to pick a spot where I get about three turns of this. And strip it away from the stem. I like to have nice long stems here. They're easy to grab onto when I'm winding this around. I'll tie this in tip first. And sometimes it's easy, easier to lick your fingers and kind of wet this tag end. And it kind of makes it more manageable as you're tying it in. Again, take my scissors and run it down the top. And after every turn, I'm just going to pull everything back. This plume's pretty thin, so that's four wraps. And I go. Now that's yeah, that's probably five there. That's good. Depending on the the fullness of the plume, will depend on how many turns you want to do. But just leave it sparse. All right, my second color is going to be red. Again, same quality of marabou here. Tight end tip first. And wrap it just exactly like you did the first one. Tied off really well. Clip it really close. And after I clip it, I'm just kind of wrap down the extra stem there. Okay, and you can kind of push this marabou together so it kind of blends better. It doesn't look like two different pieces you tied in. It will kind of mold itself to each other. Now I'm going to take some Lady Amherst. This clump's uh, just over a quarter inch long. I'm going to separate it into three or four pieces. I usually do four. And it's real, real easy to get kind of carried away with this this step and really put a bunch on and it doesn't matter I just think it looks better with just kind of sparse and I'm going to tie it in four sections so two on either side on the top two on either side on the bottom and I'm going to extend it just past my my loop ending Try to keep them even. I got my two on top, I'll flip it over. Get my two on the bottom. Off the little butts here. And 
Let's tie all those bits down and start kind of creating a neat little head. And for the last step, I'm going to add some flash. So I usually do two colors of flash. This is going to be copper. Red, standard red flash of boo. And then tie down those butts. I trim your thread now and I trim my flash and I'm going to extend pretty far back. This will even extend past the hook shank. I like that stuff to be, to be way back there. And there you have it. After you cement it, your finished hobo spay with some weight on there to help break the surface tension and get it down just a little further this winter. And really quick I'll show you how to loop on the stinger hook. My only, the only stinger hook I ever use are these winter super needle point size 2 for these size flies. If I'm tying anything bigger I'll go, I'll step up to a size 1 but I like 2's for an all around. Let's pull everything out of the way, pinch your loop, you put the loop through the eye of the hook, slide it down, bring the hook back through the loop, pull it tight, and there's your finished weighted hobo spade.